Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. In this lesson, we'll review a lean tool called the spaghetti diagram, which could be used for reducing waste like motion or transportation within a process. There's one prerequisite for this lesson, and that's the one that's on the seven deadly wastes, where there are two of those seven deadly wastes are examined using the spaghetti diagram. So let's jump into defining what a spaghetti diagram is. The well, spaghetti diagram is a tool used to help identify two of the seven deadly weights that we're trying to remove from a process. It visually maps, first of all, transportation, which again is the path of the product's movement, as well as motion, the path of the equipment or operator, those who are not the product themselves but interact with the product. It's tracking the transportation or the motion within the process in order to expose any potential waste that might occur there and it's usually used for mapping the paths of movement within a fixed environment. For example, if it's in within one office floor or a warehouse or between multiple buildings that are on a campus. Now, how do you create the spaghetti diagram? First, you would map the area on a sheet of paper, the actual area itself. So if it's a warehouse, you need to make sure that you draw any walls or any areas of equipment or shelving or things that you need to move around. And then you would draw the path from beginning to end of how the, depending on what you're tracking, if it's transportation, how the product moves within that area. Or if it's motion, how the equipment or people move within that area. And you just draw those paths. Now the paths have to be drawn continuously from the beginning of the flow all the way to the end of their flow. And every movement that's bouncing multiple times between the same locations should be individually drawn. Don't just draw it once and say, well, this represents multiple paths. The intent here is to redraw it every single time that there is movement or transportation within these different areas. And you make sure that you do not draw through any walls, equipment, or shelves. Draw the actual paths that we're taking. Now, after you do this, you would also want to measure at the time or distance for each of the paths that you think might be critical paths within this flow. Now, you'd want to review this with your team. Make sure the team agrees that the paths drawn are accurate and that any overlapping path that occurs is potential waste. And then you would want to redraw the ideal state with your team. Now, when you're evaluating the ideal state, you'll need to compare the actual cost to create that ideal state versus any efficiency that you might gain from creating that ideal state. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. Well, I'd like you to think of at least three different processes that you interact with regularly that might include some form of motion and or transportation types of waste. And then draw on a piece of paper the layout of the area affected by the particular process. Then draw the map following the flow from beginning to end of either the motion of the people that are involved in the process. And then you could also separately draw out the transportation of the item itself through the process. You could actually even do this on the same map if you wanted. If there wasn't going to conflict too much, you could do it in two different colors and drawing the map. Either way, you want to distinguish between the motion that's flowing as well as from the transportation. Next, what areas stand out as having excessive motion or transportation within the process? And how can that motion or transportation be minimized within the process? And what are the costs you think that could be involved if you were to streamline the process to an ideal state, that is, having less motion or less transportation? And finally, what are the savings that you think you can expect if you were to streamline the process in that way? Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.